If you honestly tell me that after that show, Xbox doesn't have any games coming, it's brand loyalty. There's something going on if you watch that show and are still saying that, because this Xbox Bethesda game showcase we just got pr is probably the best show that Xbox has had in years, not since 2018. Because guess what? It is filled with games, games, games. I have I could put the list of them in front of me. I'm not gonna go over every single one in this video It's just going to be raw me talking and summarizing the things that kind of stood out to me Things come in a game pass partnerships and just kind of overall what really stood out So if you want a summary, I'll try to put a link to one in the description and There's quite a lot and you might look at the list and go. Ah, oh, there was only like 20 things or something like that announced dude they showed they showed they showed up and I, I'm gonna shout out to like a couple youtubers here I think um it beat him ups I saw his video about this and he's right literally you just get the box you just get a box don't matter what kind and you can play most of these games not all of them but most of them <sighs> I need to collect myself here <laughs> let's start off with what they start off with in the show which is Xbox's exclusivity with Bethesda. They kicked off the show right away with one of the two things we knew we would see, which is Starfield. Starfield is an Xbox exclusive. That was the biggest thing. The release date was also there. I love the way they revealed that, but the main thing to me is knowing the next Todd Howard game is an Xbox exclusive. The same people that make Elder Scrolls and Fallout, their next game is Xbox exclusive and at the end of the show they end it with Arcane Arcane Studios I would argue comparably to Insomniac PlayStation has Insomniac Xbox has Arcane those two studios know how to make great ass gameplay and Arcane's next game is going to be an Xbox exclusive where you are playing in a co-op shooter hunting vampires sign me up <laughs> but that's a really big thing that they confirmed in this show that's really exciting to know that you know, this is something you will only get on Xbox, and that's why we're investing in these studios. Speaking of our studios, there was a lot of stuff from the first party Xbox stuff. Just in August, there is Psychonauts 2 finally having a release date, 12 minutes, a great indie game that I've been dying to play, and just before that, another Xbox Game Studios game is Microsoft Flight Simulator at the end of July. Those three games over the course of one month, and I don't have to pay for any of them. That's insane to me. And it just keeps going. Back for Blood showed up at the Xbox Game Showcase, and they had their own show that they were doing today. Warner Bros. wanted to demonstrate that game, and Back for Blood shows up at the Xbox Game Showcase, and I'm like, okay, what's that doing here? Turns out, partnership time, MLB The Show did great, and Outriders from Square Enix did great. Guess what? We are going to trust that Back for Blood is going to do great. Back for Blood is a day one Game Pass launch. That shit's insane. I want to pay for my games. I want to buy my games. I don't care to get my games for free. If you want to buy the games, great. Guess what? Look at Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a technical showcase. Look at Psychonauts 2. It's by Double Fine. So one of the best goddamn devs out there. And 12 minutes is such a neat concept. I'm only talking about those three games. There was like 20 of them shown here. I haven't even talked about Halo. They showed Halo, Starfield, a awesome Sea of Thieves expansion with Jack Sparrow in it that is actually going to pull me in to Sea of Thieves. I've been meaning to get into Sea of Thieves for a while, but I needed something to really get me invested in it to put some time and then I'll like, you know, get consumed by it. Jack Sparrow and the gang with the voice cast from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies gonna be in Sea of Thieves as a story mode. You can play it with your friends. That sounds awesome. And Stalker 2, probably the game of the show for me, the most visually stunning first-person shooter game I have ever seen. And it's, I wouldn't even call it a first-person shooter. That's just what it is. But the style is much more like first-person horror that you're using guns to get through this place. This game is absolutely stunning. And it shows like what the next-gen exclusives for Xbox can do. And it is a next-gen exclusive and it looks phenomenal and we also get you know here's doom with its next gen patch here's also the entire yakuza series on game pass and we get starfield that stuff 
Sea of Thieves with Pirates of the Caribbean, Halo Infinite, which I haven't talked about, and so much in just the first, Psychonauts 2, so much in the first 30 minutes of this show that I was like, what is going on? And Halo Infinite, you know how much I love those games. You know, Halo is one of my two fair game franchises of all time. But I came out of this show, like I was happy with what I saw with Halo Infinite. It's beautiful. It's such a drastic improvement from what we saw in last July. I'm so happy about that. There's things I'm a little bit kind of iffy about, but nonetheless, it looks great, but that's not even the game I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about so much more than just my, my favorite game franchise. I came out of a showcase thinking about so much more. And when you say that Xbox doesn't have games, when you come out of a showcase and you see the next installment of your favorite franchise and you come out thinking about everything else instead, and you say there's not games that's exciting? My mind, I don't understand, dude. I really don't. Xbox hit it. I was not expecting them to blow my mind as much as they did this show. And I admit, I think they went too hard in the first half of the show. They definitely went really hard in the first half. They brought it back in the second half with a few things like, I don't know, a sequel to Game of the Year nominee, Outer Worlds, which had the coolest and funniest cinematic trailer there will ever be in the history of time. It's so far off and they acknowledge that, but it's like, hey, we're working on that. So look forward to it. It kind of slowed down the back half though. It really did. Um, I thought Age of Empires 4, seeing a glimpse of that was really cool. Uh, there was also one point of this show that there was kind of like this furry animal game that seems like a fun party game to do with friends. And I'm leaving out a lot of little stuff like Among Us coming to Game Pass and other things and Hades to Game Pass. There's things that I'm leaving out. A really cool thing um, was they just kind of shadow dropped Forza Horizon 5. It wasn't necessarily a shadow drop, but it's like it's coming out within the next few months. It's coming out in November. And so it was that is it was back to back with Microsoft Flight Simulator, Forza Horizon 5 and Microsoft Flight Simulator together were absolutely stunning looking games that I think Forza Horizon is cross gen, but Microsoft Flight Sim isn't. But between Stalker 2, Microsoft Flight Sim and Forza Horizon 5, those three games showcase the goddamn power of next gen on Xbox series because Forza Horizon is a stunning looking game. Like I honestly was in awe seeing all the ray tracing that was happening on the roof of the car and the wide jungles and sands that you see. And there's just like the fun game that's in it too. Like the people are gonna like go me like, oh, visuals aren't everything. Dude, there's fun game. I'm not into car games, but I saw this one. I'm like, you know what? This could be a really neat time to just kind of drive around with friends and doing random crap, like hitting pinatas. And that's a game that's coming out in November. And November this year, I'm forgetting a game, but there's Halo Infinite, Forza Horizon 6, 6, sorry, 5, and there was one other thing, I can't remember. There's literally three things for most likely the fall season. And then there's three things in August. And there's a lot of things in between. There was a Plague's Tale sequel announced. A Plague's Tale sequel announced at this show. That's awesome. And I, I haven't even mentioned Battlefield 2042. The gameplay was freaking solid for that. That's a, you know, cross-platform thing. And you'll get to be able to play it for 10 hours through EA Play. But what I am getting at in all this is this just was games, games, games. I'm like looking at other people's opinions and it's just mind-blowing. How many games was at this show? How many really good looking games? There's gotta be at least something here for you. And it's honestly making my head hurt thinking about how many games I have access to thanks to Game Pass. That's not me. I'm not trying to sell you on Game Pass. I'm just strictly telling you being a Game Pass subscriber and watching this showcase, I don't, I don't, I don't intend to buy a game anytime soon unless it's something that I am just a big fan of and I need to play it, I, I'm set. This was the best showcase Xbox has had in so long and they they kind of addressed 
what we can essentially basically say is that Bethesda games are going to be exclusive now. Tons of games coming to Game Pass really showcased what the system can do using like Microsoft Flight Sim, Forza and Stalker. Had a lot of fun games coming like Halo Infinite, Psychonauts 2, and I would say Forza Horizon again. And and that fun furry game like there's so much cool sh Slime Rancher 2. I haven't mentioned that. I'm actually leaving out a lot of games. I have not mentioned every game that was in this showcase. Go watch it or go watch a summary of it because it is stunning. It was a fantastic showcase that kind of slowed down in the back half. That makes me, you know, not say it was perfect. But if the back half kept going at the same rate that the first half was going, I would say that was one of the best shows I have ever seen at E3. Do you think Xbox doesn't have games coming? Please explain that to me don't do it in a way that is like you just thinking of the brand that you are loyal to please just set aside your personal preferences after you watch this show explain with logic not emotions how xbox doesn't have games that could possibly interest you i don't know that i'd love to hear it leave a comment appreciate your time thanks for watching this be geek be proud be awesome